episode 11. What does staying in your lane mean? And oh God, what is your opinion? Of staying in your lane? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, let's just clarify, my, my definition is based, or my idea of that is based on um, a 28 year old's idea, mm -hmm. right? I'm sure when I'm 50, mm -hmm. I might have a different idea on that. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine what it would be mm -hmm. to have an idea of when I'm 50, right? Time will change my opinions. Mm -hmm. But for right now, um, and I'll just speak with regards to program design um, and fitness assessment and train, basically training in general, training, mm -hmm. the process of training individuals to improve or what, or to basically to achieve their goals, right? Um, so I think the, one of the main things to focus on is the amount of time required to master your, your craft, mm -hmm. right? And the amount of time required to become what some would call like an expert or someone that you said you're gonna seek out mm -hmm. for help, mm -hmm. someone you're gonna go out of your way to learn from, um, someone that you're going to like really trust their opinions, um, and then through time and through, um, yeah, basically through time, they're gonna be, those types of individuals will be the ones that are gonna be um, the most trusted sources and resources on their topics. Um, the, there's just, there's so many avenues of education, right? There's so many ways to improve or things to learn with regards to fitness and training. Um, what I think stay in your lane means with, with what I do is, for example, like, um, I, have, I have people that I refer people to for physical assessment um, or, or sort of management of injuries. Um, I have a really good friend that I send most of my people to. His name is Dr. Brian Miles. He lives here in Calgary. Um, and I trust him. And then, again, with nutrition, I have, if someone wants a very detailed plan and a very good run through on their nutrition, um, and they want, um, and they want like someone to look at their lab results and hormone profile and whatnot, then they should seek help. And that's not me. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. Um, and I don't pretend I know how to do that. Mm -hmm. So I refer them to my, again, some of my friends, um, Mike Costelli and um, with Dynamic Nutrition. Okay, some of the water. <coughs> And then, same thing. It's not really that much different. Um, if I, if some person consults me and wants to understand uh, business systems and how to probably integrate that stuff and how that works, um, I don't think I'm the person that they should really be seeking out for that mm -hmm. because I don't spend all my time doing it. And then someone, you know, really doesn't have a really good idea as to what they want to do with their life or. Um, or they're having a really big issue and they really want to talk about some serious matters, you know, they can discuss it with me, but I'm not, I'm, I don't believe I'm in a qualified position to, um, to guide them mm -hmm. and to be responsible because I'm not, because the one thing you have to realize too is that your insurance won't cover it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, but, but just along with all those things we just discussed, like, uh, injury, like, uh, physical issues, nutritional stuff, business stuff, like everyday life stuff, um, that's not what I'm trying to be the best at. I'm not, I don't care, I, not that I don't care about those things, it's just that I don't care if someone thinks I'm good at it or not. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Um, because I don't believe you need to have a really high competency in either one of those things to be very, very good at coaching individuals and fitness. I don't believe you need that. Um, you have to have some idea, and what I mean like a high competency, I mean like you are really, really good at it. Not like you dabble with it and you read mm -hmm. read an hour a week on something and you're like, oh, I love this stuff. It's like, no. I mean, you do it all the time. And for someone that's young, like, well, like both of us are young, um, you, you only have so much time to do stuff during the week. And if you spend, to me, if you spend 20 hours doing X, 20 hours doing Y, and then 20 hours doing Z, right? Um, which one are you going to be best at? Right? Mm -hmm. 
right? I think you're better off spending 50 hours doing doing X and five and five doing something else. Um, I think you're better off mastering an area um, of and, and becoming becoming like a subject matter expert or becoming as, as involved um, as, and as confident as possible in that field. Because that, those are the people you seek out for help. Those are the people that you look to for information. Um, to be a specialist. You, you, need to be, you need to be a specialist. And I totally agree with that. Um, and it's, and yeah, it's, it's, not about, it's not about being more confident than someone else. And it's not saying that you, you shouldn't know things about those other, other areas. It's, it's like, uh, I, would, I would say I know quite a bit about nutrition like a large amount, and I would say I know a large amount about the physical body and about assessment and about injury, but I wouldn't say I'm good enough to ignore having someone to refer people to and have them take care of them, because that's all they do. And I want to assume that those people also want to be masters in their domain, right? But I can't do both. I can't stand in two circles. I can only stand in one. So I want to stand in my program design, assessment, training, working with individuals circle, and I want to master that. Mm -hmm. And then I want people like in five, 10 years to be like, yeah, if you want coaching, like you have to contact this person mm -hmm. because he is as good as possible at this area, right? I'm, I'm not, I don't want people contacting me going, hey, I have a back issue. How do we work through this as I, like um, I'm not interested in, doing X, Y, Z, all I want to do is uh, rehab my back and then I don't want to train anymore. I have no interest in that. And you just have to set that out. But if I wanted to be an expert in like corrective exercise and like in bringing people from like uh, a base level of ability to a functionality state, that's cool. But that's a different discipline even again than from taking people from a functionality state to the highest level of performance possible. Right? If you master that end of it with working with rehabbing individuals and managing um, issues and movement restrictions and all that stuff, your opinions on the other end of it are not that relevant. They're important and you can definitely have a say and there's definitely principles that will cross over, but you don't get to say what happens over here. Just like the person working with the highest end individuals, their ideas as to what needs to happen will make sense and will have credence with working with base level beginners and people that are injured and whatever, but they're not the ones that should be telling these people what to do. That's an even different area. So I'm trying to slowly focus more of my area, more of my scope of practice in one area. And it's taken time and you have to work within the confines of your business and making sure that all works together. But even we're just talking about a lot of different things and it's just a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. Yeah. And you can't you can't do everything. You really can't. And you really have to hone in on a, one thing or a few things. Mm -hmm. Not even a few things. One thing and master that thing. Yeah. Really great example as we talked uh, a couple of days ago. Is when you when you go for a heart surgery, you seek out the heart surgeon. Yeah. <laughs> it's very simple. Yeah. Right? It's like, hey, I broke my leg. I'm gonna go see a um, massage therapist. Like, mm -hmm. no, <laughs> you're not gonna see a massage therapist. You're probably gonna see an orthopedic surgeon um, because they deal with broken bones all day long, mm -hmm. right? And that's the type of people you wanna work with. Um, yeah, and I, I, got, and I, I think, again, we talked about this before, I think this is more relevant to people at a very higher level of uh, performance. Mm -hmm. It's more relevant to work with people that are also kind of focus on certain things. Mm -hmm. I think for the general public, it makes more sense to, um, it makes more sense to be confident in all areas, mm -hmm. right? Because you kind of, I, I don't really think you're gonna need to have the most fine-tuned ability mm -hmm. in each of those disciplines to work with those people. But it would still hold that if like, if this 50-year-old woman comes in and she has like some serious issues, whether it be injury-wise or whatever, I don't feel confident in going, you know what, I'm gonna deal with this. Mm. Because on the off chance I'm wrong, because I haven't had enough experience and mm. knowing exactly what to do, 
that's not good. That's not good. And you think about it in five different, like you think about you're offering three services. Let's just pick three services. Nutrition, like injury prevention, corrective exercise, whatever, and uh, performance training. You're offering these three. If you have 60 hours a week that people can pay you, okay? Um, and all you do is these different three, mm -hmm. I would argue that if you just do one of them, you can charge more for that one discipline mm -hmm. and work 60 hours a week getting paid more mm -hmm. than three different disciplines, mm -hmm. which are not actually that valuable at each, either of them, mm -hmm. and you get paid less for all yeah. 60 hours. Because if you can fill your time mm -hmm. doing what you want to do, then what does it matter? But in time, over time, you will be the best at what you're doing. Yeah, it, it totally makes sense to me. Mm. Any any other comments on that? No. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Unless you have some comments. Oh yeah. No, probably not right now. Yeah. Great discussion. Yeah, man. Thanks. No worries.